Hello, Martin, and and welcome again to to this podcast. This is the first time you're joining us remotely, so welcome. That is, hey, thanks, Brian. Okay, so what happened with our our mobile product in Q two of uh, this year? I just want some some short answers. I don't need everything that happened. Sure. Uh, short and sweet. Um, went through our beta with operators, which we mentioned in our last podcast. So that's coming to a close at the end of this month. So very excited about that. So that's with our um, Syrinx um, product users. Um, okay. With inside of Elite, we did a lot of background work in terms of supporting work orders. So we've seen that in Q3. And by supporting work orders, I mean the ability to uh, create a work order and then to modify it to manage the parts, remove, add and remove parts, things of that nature. Okay, so so that was, yeah, all, uh, all that's going to be manageable by by within your mobile device now, right? That is correct. Yep. Or within within quarter three. Within quarter three, yep. Uh, okay. We're very near to releasing the parts side of it, um, and then the create work orders will come after that. Awesome. Cool. So I th- I think you just mentioned a thing that we're looking forward to in quarter three, but. Uh, is is there is, is there anything else that we're looking forward to in the next uh, again quarter? Or so you know, keeping in mind obviously that everything you say here is a this is what we're hoping for. This is what it looks like it's going to be, rather than a this is for sure coming out. Yep. Um, so in pure one with elite, um, we did actually build out uh, our offline infrastructure, and so we are we already were supporting doing routes or not routes. Sorry. Um, having your uh, tasks that were created, being able to complete those, messaging, a few other different, uh, uh, what are they called, call logs. And then we, um, this quarter, put in additional support, which will allow us to actually create tasks offline from from routes. So if you remember, we launched routes early Q1. And so we are now downloading routes to the device and we'll actually um, completely remove the uh, need for a driver to be uh, connected to any network. So. That's exciting, exciting to come. Um, for our Syrinx team, we've started um, work on um, pulling in the workshop app, and we're going to be adding some new features to that, as well as giving it iOS support. So we've started working on that. That'll take us for them into probably Q4, um, but we'll okay. be working diligently on it the next next quarter. Cool. So what are, what are some of the differences? You mentioned uh, being able to have iOS support. Like what... What extra work are we doing in order to make that a thing? So for Pure One, nothing. Pure One's natively supports iOS and Android. Um, we're pulling in the features from some of our legacy apps that didn't have that functionality. So making sure that we now can't support those. And also just updating the um, those infrastructures and technologies that we're using so that they're more manageable. And as I was mentioning, we can add features to them. Um, and then I also left off one new exciting thing we're actually going to be doing um, condition photos and uh, check in check out or customer pickup and uh, drop off versus a driver pickup and drop off but all those workflows we're also bringing to essentials uh, in q3 well you're not supposed to leave stuff off so i'm glad that you got around to it <laughs> and i'm glad we're going to have cool mobile mobile uh, features for all of our products with within yeah 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 we're actually hitting all all three products in uh, q3 which is awesome yeah it's awesome to see that uh, getting built out. Okay, now we have a, a personal question, and this is sure. this is our personal question of the month. Uh, would you like to be famous, and in what way? Ooh, um, wow, that's a really interesting one. Uh, you know, a lot of things come with with fame, but I I think it goes most peacefully with authors. Okay. And so, if if I were to to be famous, it would you know be something like like Stephen King or you know, he's very prolific and well known, yet they're kind of mysterious, you know, stays out of the spotlight, can lead his own life without, you know, any anyone encroaching or like showing up in your property doing weird things. So I would say that I, I wouldn't want to do the, the sports fame or actor or anything like that. Uh, it'd probably be something more along those lines. Just like have your name be famous, but it's like, mm, I don't I don't need to have people recognize me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like who actually flips over to that last you know, inlet of the book and sees yeah. the picture of the, of the author, like 
almost no one. You just see those big letters on the front. So you know the name and that's it. All right. But if you were standing in front of you at the grocery store, you'd be none the wiser. That sounds like a good level of fame to have. All right. Well, uh, thank you, Martin. And I look forward to catching up with you next quarter. Awesome, Brian. I appreciate the time.